All right. So um, this is a thing I made a couple months ago just for fun. Um, it's it's a uh, basically a synthesizer with web audio. Uh, you see this grid here. Um, the the vertical axis is note values. So like the higher here, the higher the note, the lower down here, the lower the note. And then left to right is time. And so I don't know, I guess you can see it highlighted there. Like as it, as it plays through it, you can kind of see that it does that. And then you can, you know, change it to make it do stuff. And then so there are, like you can save a pattern if you like. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Uh, and then you can like save patterns and then I've got a couple pre-built patterns in here. And then down at the bottom, there's I'm just, I'm gonna keep stopping it and starting again so it's just not playing the whole time. Um, so down at the bottom, there are different ways that you can kind of manipulate the sound itself. So, and then I've got a couple like pre-built uh, synth. So as I click through these, you'll see kind of the uh, the values down here change, and you'll hear the sound change. Some of them are better sounding than others, but it's all very like uh, kind of like eight bit, sixteen bit, you know, video game kind of sounds. So like if you're there's actually a, a genre of music called chip tunes, if, if you're not familiar, where it's basically just like video game sounding music. So there's that. Um, and then I can go through and there are like different ways that you can change the shape of the sound. So uh, there are several different sound waves. So like this is, I've got a picture here. This is like what different sound waves look like. So a sine wave is, you know, very, uh, very smooth sounding. And they, they like, they kind of sound like what you would expect here. Like a square wave is rougher sounding and a triangle and a salt tooth. So like, as I, I can kind of change through these and you can hear how it changes the sound. Some of them are louder than others. Uh, let me go back to this. You can change scales, which gives you different sounds. Change keys. Like here's a harmonic minor. So you can get different different sounds. And then the envelope allows you to like, if I change the attack, you hear it, it changes from like, a very hard attack at the beginning to like kind of more soften the pass. And then by tweaking these, you can get different types of sounds. And then uh, there's also a filter, which basically you can either use what's called a high pass or a low pass, and that filters out frequencies uh, above or below a certain cutoff point. So, to give an example of what it sounds like, uh, as I change the cutoff value, like as I go down here, you hear it kind of, you can only hear the very lowest frequencies. And then as you come up through it, it brings other frequencies. And then you can do like this kind of stuff to make some sounds. So that's what I spend the whole weekend on sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so why'd you come up with like, uh, I was just playing around with web audio. So I was going to, I was going to show like a simple example in code pen of like the basic principles behind it. I'm kind of using some libraries on top of it to make it a little easier. Um, but I just wanted to play around with web audio and I like audio stuff in general. So, and I like to annoy people with annoying noises. So, uh, basically like, I think that was Ethan saying you like to do the same. <laughs> I, was, I was asking what libraries you're using. Oh, uh, Tone JS. I'll put it, I'll send you a link to it. Um, and I actually, I was using another one, like 
a separate library to determine the uh, the different scales. Like I used a library that generates the scales and then basically passes that to uh, the you know the uh, to tone JS to be able to you know build things in a specific scale. Um, so basically, like usually web audio gets used for you know like loading a sound file like an mp3 and then uh playback like controlling you know stopping and starting the playback or playing it back at a different rate uh but like one of the lesser known features of uh modern browsers is that you can actually generate sounds with it so like all the noise you heard uh in the sequencer was all generated by the browser so uh kind of the way that you do that is you have to create an audio context and um, so so you create a new audio context and this is a little cross browser trick because i think safari still uses webkit audio context and the other browsers use audio context so <clears throat> when you create an audio context what that gives you is uh, the ability to create different audio nodes. And so there are different types of audio nodes that can either generate or manipulate a sound signal. Uh, so one of the, the main audio node type that uh, I'm using here is an oscillator. And that's kind of modeled after like an old school analog synthesizer. Basically like they create a, <clears throat> uh, an electrical signal that oscillates at a specific frequency and the the frequency, which is determined in hertz, which is if we look back at this sound wave, uh, it's the number of peaks and valleys uh, per second. So, like the the more like the more squished this would be, that would be a higher frequency, which would be a higher note, and uh, the more spread out it would be, would make a lower frequency, which would be a lower note. Um, and then we we looked at like the different types, so like. You can set the oscillator to a sine wave, but you also have sine, square, triangle, and sawtooth. Um, and then you can set the frequency. So this is set to 440, which is uh, a equivalent to a concert A on a piano. There's a fun nerd rabbit hole that you can go down uh, around like note values and frequency values, but uh, we'll just leave it at that for right now. So, <clears throat> um, Basically, you can take these nodes and you can connect them in various ways to change the shape of the sound. Uh, it's kind of like if you had a, you know, like with an electric guitar, you can plug it in and then you can run it directly to an amp to uh, amplify the sound, or you can run it through various effects pedals, which would, you know, depending on how you have the the pedals connected together, would change the sound of the the you know, the end sound. So you can kind of do that same thing with web audio. Uh, so I've got two nodes here. I've got the oscillator and then a gain node, which basically acts as the volume. So it can be gain node has a value between zero and one. So zero would be no volume at all. And uh, one would be full volume. So then you can connect the oscillator to the gain node and then connect the gain node to the audio context destination which is what actually allows the sound to play and so then you have to start the oscillator and this is a fun thing thanks to uh, Chrome so recently they've probably some of you have heard you know that they have changed their policy around uh, playing web audio so you know everyone hates auto playing music or in like any kind of auto, auto playing audio and so the way that Chrome has decided to do this is you can only play audio after uh, a user has done some kind of gesture, like a click. And then not only that, but you have to, you have to actually call after, after a user has performed a gesture, you have to call audiocontext.resume. Um, and if you don't do that, you don't get any sound. And so that's cool because, you know, everybody hates auto playing. Uh, sound but at the same time like if if somebody was making like an HTML5 game or something like that that used web audio um, now it's broken in Chrome 
unless you come back and because it's, it's a breaking change. So unless you come back and explicitly call audio context dot resume after uh, a user gesture, you don't get any sounds. Um, and then the rest of this is just kind of, I've got a couple controls down here where they manipulate different things. So changing the wave, changing the volume and changing the actual frequency of the sound. So if I turn this up, we get this cool noise, which gets annoying quickly, but you can kind of change, you know, the frequency. And then like, if I change the type, it gets even more annoying. But you can get some fun sounds out of it. And that's all I've got. You want to ask for a question? Uh, questions? Do you have any plans for what you're going to do with with this stuff? Or is it just kind of experimenting with um, the audio? Can you repeat the question? <clears throat> so the question was, uh, what am I going to do from here? Um, so it was mainly, yeah, just like you said, I was just experimenting with it to, to see if I could build something. Um, I do have like on my sequencer, I have a branch right now where it actually allows you to record. And basically what that does is, you know, we talked about like how basically it's, it's a signal that goes through and you can connect the various things. So uh, that just involves adding another node right before the output that captures all of the audio. And then there's like, I found a, a library that will take that signal and convert it like to a wave file. 